how do you create a PDF document in an SAP uh, CPI world? Um, so some time ago I created a YouTube video, you can probably see it here somewhere. And one of the things that was in this was how do you take an XML document converted to PDF in Java. And a, that's a common requirement and it is getting a lot of views. So I just wanted to create something that was showing you how this could be done in a PI world or CPI world. Um, the, the idea is that you can actually take this, uh, this processing and create like a microservice in the CPI architecture. And that is what it's really good for, that you can take all the content, deploy it, and then you can call it and get the data back uh, if you want to. So the incoming message is an XML. It will then be sent to a specific iFlow that will take this XML, convert it to an Apache FOB uh, XML document, and then it will convert this into the, the binary document, uh, binary PDF, which is not really a binary, but some text markup, and then it will save it to give it back to we, via the HTTP client that the user can do. So the way we have created this is, I've created a simple iFlow that has a process direct, one groovy script in here, and then we have uh, created all the different resources that is needed for the Apache uh, FOP to, to work. Um, added these here, probably there is some of these that could be ignored because they are part of the, the camel standard libraries, but it was easier just adding all of them. Then we have the groovy script here, and I think it was probably checked out later. Um, so I've just created a simple groovy script. The, the way I've done created this, because it's a little complicated writing all of this in, in the Groovy script, is I've used the FICAF ET tool. And in this tool, we're downloading all your different iFlows, all the different content, all the different scripts, resources. And then we are putting them into a Git repository. And we have that here. Oh, here in my IntelliJ, I've created this repository. Uh, with all the different information in it. And if we look at this, uh, the, the dim project we're working on right now, it's this, uh, we have the iFlow, and here we have the, the script that we finally created in this uh, process. Um, so we've created some plugins that allow you to upload and deploy uh, these plugins directly from here. But one of the difficult things is about how you're actually going to create this and check it and run it. Uh, if you're just using the, the standard uh, Eclipse or the standard uh, IDE for it. So what we did was we did go and create a test case with the FIGAF tool. And in this test case, we then were able to create the test cases of the incoming. And if we we'll just look at this, this is the Apache for formatted XML. So the, the service is sending it to this microservice with this format. And we are then looking at the, the payload here. We can see that it is uh, Apache or PDF created with this specific document. Um, so what we can do is we can tr press this button and this will add this as to a Git repository. And I've already done that. That was how I did create this. So it created these XML files with what's the incoming message and what's the, the payload, what's the outgoing message. And obviously at this point in time, we don't have an, really an outgoing message for the Groovy script. Um, that is what it's all about, about this iterative development. But what this actually gives us is that we have the option to create a test script where we can just say this is the, the script we want to run, this is the process that we want to send to it, and we can then set up assertions. But uh, in the beginning, it was just about writing this to uh, writing the output. To a, to a file so I can see what was going on. And then once I progressed, I was then able to say, okay, that the payload needs to contain something that looks like the, the PDF. And what this then enables us to do is we can go and we can check out um, the process. We can set it uh, set up a breakpoint here. 
and we can run run our script here so we can run it here in in debug mode and it will then send the data to the debugger and we can then see all our groovy scripts when it's coming in here we can see it's getting this message and the message then consists of all the different headers we have all the different properties uh, the payload or the the body and we can then step through all of this apache fob we can see it creates it get the byte save it um, and we are getting then the output bytes of it um, let's just see So here we have now we have created the uh, the message and saved it back to to the body and in this property we can then say in the body now we still have it if we move one step further I guess we will receive it and and we can then see if everything is okay it will then run its test and it will check if everything is is successful so with this way of developing it's really simple to see what you have added how, how everything works and once you are satisfied with the result you simply just click upload and this will take the iFlow upload it to the CPI uh, with all the different libraries attached to it so you can understand what are the libraries you can deploy it from here so let's just try to upload it um, if I didn't do any changes, then let's, let's try. And this will just take all the, the components, bundle them together, and deploy it, uh, upload it, and then you can deploy it uh, also with a command, and that is also pretty simple. So normally it takes a few seconds, but because there's a lot of dependencies or a lot of libraries that's been added, it takes a little longer time uh, because there's... Uh, some some payloads in it so 25 seconds we can then deploy it directly from here and yeah obviously that does speed up the the process of what you want to achieve with it um and we can then see here it has status deploying it will then show once we get so there's two phases in deploying there's a deploying status success and then you got the 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 starting and the starting can also take a bit, bit longer uh, depending on what kind of scenario and everything you you have in that uh, that case so yeah and the the code here is is pretty simple uh, copied for some other place and it's just about guild getting a builder factory and in the builder factory you can get it and create templates that you can use um, so yeah, you're using the same content all the time and have a template. So if you have multiple resources, you don't need to put that into the the XML. It will, what are the output we want to create? Do this uh, transformation. We are getting a SACS result. And then once it has run this, we're just taking the, the byte array output stream, putting into a body and setting it as a, an attribute. And then we can run it. Let's see if it works now. And this will then say, hey, save it. Save to file. Oh, let's just. So we'll send it. And we can see it's it's pretty quick uh, to, to process. Yeah, so, so we can see it. The, it now gets the, the real name um, and we have created this and I do like the, the, the iterative approach that you can take creating this, getting the mock data, being able to run it directly from your your Eclipse or IntelliJ tool being able to deploy it and it does contain a lot of all these uh, messages that you need it for it to run so uh, yeah, you can uh, find the code for this and, and try to deploy it on your own CPI system. Um, you can also try the VGAF tool, go to vgaf.com forward slash IoT, download it and run it and see how it will help you at least with, with this part, but there's a lot of other areas that it will work in in, in the, 
this uh, format. So uh, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to, to get more of these uh, videos that I'm creating. So uh, thanks for watching.